what is it that you would look for if you're going to go and get HMO now that you're going to develop and be able to pull your money out? What is it you would look for for that particular deal to work? Yeah, so it's not always necessary pulling the money out. That's what stops people, especially if costs, you know, because the market always fluctuates. Yeah, house prices go up, they go down. Build costs, they go up, they go down. And I don't mean down, down. I mean down in the comparison of, let's say, if a property's worth, I don't know, 400K, the comparison of what it would cost to convert that place may fluctuate. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like, now the prices have gone up, I don't see them going down. You know, maybe they just keep going up. Yeah, but maybe the gap is the best way to put it. So, it's not necessarily always getting your money out or when that time comes where the fluctuation, the, the gap is too small, you can't buy no deals. That's what stops people. Right, okay. Yeah, so what you've got to look at is something like this. So let's take the deal that we were just looking at. Yeah, so we said the revaluation would be seven, 375. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So 375,000 times 75%. That's what I mean by it shows you what's coming next. So explain what 75% so is. So 75% is the drawdown. So when I revalue the property and it gets valued at 375, the bank is now going to pay us 281, yeah? Mm -hmm. so, so 281 is what they're going to pay, right? But this is what we want to work out. So if we just go on a worst case at the moment times 6%, 6 is the interest rate on the mortgage. mortgage. Yeah, times, uh, sorry, divided by 12 gives me what I'm paying per month. So 1,400 quid is my mortgage. And if it's five units, it's going to be plus about another 600. Yeah, so we're at 2,000 for the cost. Okay, so you've, the 600 is utilities and bills, not that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're good on that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, 650 a unit times five, the income is 325, yeah? Uh, it's 3,250. That's the income? That's the income. Yep. Yeah, so Gross. take away the 2,000 of the cost, leaves us with 1,250 cash flow, yeah? Uh -huh. When it's full. Yeah. So you always got to consider that this is only when it's full. Yeah. Now, um, now what we do is we say, right, if we were going to leave 30K in the deal, so 30K, and this is how you work out what your maximum offer is. The, the things you want to know is what's the cash flow after refinance? What's your money in, money out figure? 30,000 left in, yeah? Mm -hmm. So then, now what I've got to look at is say, right, let's say if that's left in and I need to pay someone a return on that money. So let's say times 10%, so 3,000, divided by 12 is 250 a month, yeah? So I've got 1,250 cash flow. Mm -hmm. If 30 k is left in, I pay them 250, yeah? So that's, what's 250 come from, the 10% on the 30K? 10% on the 30K, yeah. on a monthly basis. So 10% uh -huh. is that you're paying back to the investors? Yeah. So they're earning a return from their money being in the deal? Yes. And that's 250 what you pay them? Yeah, that's 10% on a monthly basis. Okay, so then you have to minus that from the 12. Cash flow, which will give you a grand. Yeah. So I'm not saying that that deal and that calculation is what I would go for, uh, sorry, that deal is what I would go for on those numbers. But what I'm saying is that's what's you got to be your, ca your calculation. But that's only best case scenario with all the rooms being filled. Exactly. So, so every time one, fill, one, one is not filled, that 1,000 would just take away 650. Yeah, I'll be down at 350. Mm. Yeah, but this is what determines the deal. Yeah, that's why the five units, I said, you want at least six. Do you remember me saying? You know, because with the right coaching and the right people around you, you don't have to start like, you know, I was told to start with a buy to let. So we went and did six HMOs and one flip instead. Yeah. But like my, my question to you, Mark, more to the point was like, if you had a checklist of things you were, uh, maybe this isn't the best way to do it, but just like the question at the point was, you had a checklist of things of like three to five things you would look for to make it a good deal for a HMO. Obviously the that, numbers. That's what I would look at. But would you not 
you were saying like it's too small to do is that because you couldn't get six rooms in there no that's because it squeezes yeah because six rooms would be too tight or i'd have to do too much work so it increases the cost more without the increase in the rooms value now if you're asking for another checklist it would be to make the rooms rentable it would be to make you know like a solid property meaning like i don't want any off suites like i've done too many projects where we did we crammed them in and we got them i don't want to do that anymore i would say so i would say you know like to cram seven into a six when it could be an easy double on suite every six for all the six of them is better than a seven so the six of on suites is better i would say i would say why can you get a higher valuation on the seven yes will you get more rent if they're all full yes what's most likely to stay full is six that are like better bigger you know and the space and and then the communal area has not got the stress of an extra room as well extra cupboard extra body mm -hmm. extra this and that extra traffic you get what i'm saying so it's better standard of living for the the and tenants that, so then they stay for longer and they're more yeah they're more my solid so i've got like some very similar properties in size i've got two six beds and one seven yeah the two six beds are full and been full for a while and when they're not full i get them back and these are getting a little bit tired if i'm if i'm honest you know because it's about five years old now yeah the next one the seven always oh, something going on and that little room, the, with the room with the off suite, is always the last to go. So just to summarise, I always want to make sure the cash flow can cover whatever eventuality, like if money's left in. I always want to make sure that if two rooms are empty, I'm still making money. Making money, not breaking even. Yeah, making like yeah, because breaking even is a fine line, isn't it? Yeah. Because like, that means you're at zero. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like making money to me is fucking twenty-three pound in profit. So really, it's nothing, but it's making money still. Mm -hmm. yeah, I ain't losing money. So you got a decision to make. What's your decision? Do you sit here do nothing? Do you wait? Do you be a spectator, or do you get inside the game on the pitch so you're actually receiving real-time data? So make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'll help you keep getting in the game. Go search uh, across here, across my real life website, and my, the Mark Carvey pages, across all the social media channels. Until next time, do the right thing for the right reason because it is the only way you're going to discover your true potential.